Hello, this is Thomas, K4SWL. If you're new here, I like to do real-time, real-life amateur radio field activation videos. And today I'm at Lake Norman State Park, uh, which is uh, POTA designator Kilo-2740. And I haven't been here since, I think, January. And uh, it's, last time I was here, it was pretty chilly. Today, it is just uh, beautiful. This is a very, very beautiful uh, day. It's May 9th, uh, 2022. And I'm about to do an activation, and it's actually kind of interesting. I'm, I'm using a new radio, and I'll explain what I mean by that here in a second, and a relatively new antenna. It's certainly the first time I've paired this radio with this antenna. Even though it looks like one I've used a whole bunch, I'll tell you why it's a little bit different. Um, so I've already set up here. I'm trying to save a little bit of battery power um, on my uh, camera. And I've got my little 2 millimeter throw line. I threw this up in a tree very, very easily. In fact, it went way higher than I needed it to because the um, antenna is simply a 31-foot piece of um, speaker wire. I think this is probably 18-gauge uh, speaker wire. And you can see it just kind of goes up into the tree. It's touching some of the branches and stuff. But, uh, um, yeah, pretty much goes straight up in the tree. And then I have a 17-foot counterpoise. So I made this with one 31-foot section of this sort of zip cord. I pulled it apart, cut this on as a 17-foot length, and cut that one as a 31-foot length, uh, which works out pretty well as a random wire antenna. Now, of course, this isn't resonant, so what we do is we put it in this binding post, this BNC binding post, and connect it directly to my radio, which has a built-in antenna tuner, which doesn't actually tune the antenna. What it does is it finds an impedance match uh, to make the transceiver happy. So this isn't the most efficient of antennas, for sure, but it works. It works really well for parks on the air, for summits on the air, and things like that, where you are the DX. <laughs> People are listening for you, so you don't have to have a huge signal. Um... I'm looking forward to using the radio today. Now, this is the Shegu X6100. Now, um, why is this a new to me radio? Well, this is the first time this particular unit has been in the field. Um, basically, um, I did a review of the X6100 for the Spectrum Monitor magazine. And by the time this video is out, it'll also be on QRPR.com. In fact, I think I posted it May 1st um, on QRPR.com. So you can read that full review. I'll probably have a link in the description below, um, uh, you know, with the, the link to the actual review I did of the X6100, which is a pretty comprehensive review. That radio used for that review was actually a loaner unit from Radiodity. Uh, who is a retailer for for Shegu. They're not Shegu, but they're a retailer for Shegu. And uh, they very kindly lent me the radio, and I used it for three or four weeks. I uh, did, I think, at least four park activations with it. Maybe a summit activation, too. I can't remember now. And I used a different antenna every time I took it to the field. And I used it both in CW and single sideband. Well, once I was done with that review, I sent this radio on to the next person who was going to do an evaluation of it. And uh, I went ahead and ordered one of these from Radio Oddity. Now, I didn't order it because I thought this was such a, an amazing radio. It's kind of a mixed bag of a radio. Uh, some people may really like it. Some people may not like it. And um, I ordered it because I think this radio has a lot of possibilities uh, in the future as they do firmware updates to it. It's a fascinating kind of uh, concept to have a transceiver with a an embedded sort of Linux operating system that obviously can be rooted in things. People have done that already. And some people believe that this may be able to turn into a direct digital machine for doing like FT8 and things like that. I have no idea, but I, I decided to go ahead and order it because I thought it'd be fun to have it and see how it evolves over time. I may eventually sell it. I'm not really sure. Um, so um, that was in January. I think it was about mid-January. I sent my unit off to the next person. I ordered this one from Radio Oddity. I got it, or not this one, but I ordered one from Radio Oddity. I got it uh, at the beginning of February, I believe. It was two or three weeks after I ordered it. And um, when I got mine in, the encoder, when I would turn the encoder, I felt a rough place in it where it would just kind of like stick um, after maybe three turns. It was really weird. And I didn't like that. Of course, it's sort of like having a rock in your shoe or something. <laughs> it just wasn't nice. The radio worked great, but I wasn't too crazy about that. So I mentioned it to Radio Oddity and said, you know, I don't know if I can live with this. And they said, oh, you know what? Um, Shegu sent us, we told Shegu about it. They sent us a video demonstrating how you can fix this. 
And so I did. I followed the video and basically you have to open up the radio, which means you have to break this little seal here that says void if uh, damaged. Um, and Radio Oddity assured me, you know, this will not void your warranty. We know about this. But I felt a little funny doing it, but I didn't mind trying to do the modification. And basically, you pull the whole radio apart, and uh, behind here, there's the encoder, and the encoder has a little screw that you can uh, loosen to change the brake. And that's the only way you can get to the brake, which is, in my opinion, a negative about this radio. Um, it ha this one has a pretty tight encoder. Like you can see, I can't just get it to spin. You, you can't just spin it. It wants to brake all the time. Some people like a really breaky encoder in the field. I am one of those people, but at home I like when it's more fluid, and unfortunately this one is not. Yes, I could break this seal as well and get into it, but I, I did that with, I should say, I did that with the unit they sent me and asked me to fix. I changed the brake. It definitely made the feel more fluid, but I still felt that little catch in there that was happening. It didn't fix that, and I had a hunch it wouldn't either because I really felt like it was a mechanical issue with that encoder. So I sent that one back uh, for repair and they sent me this one. And so this one, I don't want to break the seal on this one. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to leave it kind of breaky like it is right now. Uh, one of the other problems with this radio uh, that I've mentioned on QRPR.com is it does tend to overload. I noticed I can hear it a little bit right now. Whoops. What did I do? Oh, interesting. Oh. Let's see, I can't tell. What am I changing? There we go, that's the AF gain. <laughs> I need to put my glasses on to see what that was changing. The volume control is multifunction, and so what I did was I had turned on the squelch before. Squelch, that's RF gain. So this is RF gain all the way to zero. This is RF gain to 100. Interesting. We'll turn it back down to about 70, maybe? <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Okay, so um, anyway, I like having an RF gain on here, but I, I never even really had to touch it when I was using my previous unit. The RF gain, though, is a control you can use to kind of help with overloading, but unfortunately it affects everything. So it doesn't just affect the the station that, that you're hearing that's overloading at, which is usually an AM broadcast band station uh, for the X6100, but it affects kind of everything on the band. Um, so yeah, that is the other thing about this radio. Like I said, it's kind of a mixed bag, and I encourage you to read my review. I go into more detail about this. Um, I found that uh, people on QRPR.com that, again, they either love it or, or they don't love it. And um, anyway, um, so what I want to do today is actually take this guy out and do a little CW with it. And I'd like to do an activation here real quick, uh, which means I need at least 10 contacts, of course, to have a valid activation. I did schedule this activation in advance, uh, so hopefully, um, you know, I'll get some action. I can see up here there's a contest going on. Um, that may be the sprint or something right now. Um, so I'm kind of away from that here on the band at 58.5 in the 20 meter band. We'll try 20 meters first. Um, I need to see if this will load up. Let me go ahead and hit the ATU button on top. Press and hold it. It's looking for a match. Okay, got a match. Let's see. <laughs> Looks like I'm getting, if I'm reading this correctly, about a about a two to one. That's eh, not wonderful, but it's fine for operating this radio right now. And it looks like I'm getting about three and a half watts out. With the internal battery, which is what this is using right now, it only has about um, five watts out max. So. We'll do it on 20 meters for a little bit. I may move down to 30 or 40 meters. We'll just see how it goes. I'm, I want to operate maybe 30 minutes at the most. Also using my Hammers app here. So on the side, I will be doing a little bit of logging to that as well. But I will log on paper. And uh, let's go ahead and get this started. I will tell you one other thing that's kind of annoying. It's been so long since I've used this radio, I can't remember how to use the message memory keying for CW. Now, I was able to insert my message memory keying. Like I went in here, I put in CQPOTA, D-E-K-4-S-W-L. I've saved it, but I can't get it to play. 
and I, I can't remember what I have to do to do that. I've tried to use the modem app. Uh, Shigu never makes this intuitive, and this is one of the frustrating things about them. I tried l looking under voice call, which allows me to do the voice stuff, but I can't find a way to change it to um, CW when I do it. I know there's just something I'm doing incorrectly. Uh, but I can't figure it out. It will sometimes call CQ on this first message memory when I hit this, but I can't get it to do the third one, which I also programmed. So anyway, I'm sure by the time this video is posted, I will have sorted that out. I actually downloaded the uh, Shigu manual on my phone for this radio, and it tells how to record, but it doesn't tell how to play it back. <laughs> Probably because that was before they actually put that functionality in the firmware and they just never went back and put it in the manual and i think it was the latest version of the manual but maybe i wasn't reading it correctly i was trying to re write it or read it on my phone which i'm not very good at doing so anyway let's get down to business so i will be hand keying all of this with my uh, little portable paddles um, these are some older N0SA paddles that he made uh, a few years ago, and he doesn't make these anymore, but I find them kind of fun. They're like my spare paddles, and I've been keeping them with the X6100 at a family home so that when I'm visiting that home, I can use the 6100. So let's get started. I'll go ahead and just put the um, camera down here, see if I can't find a good way to, so you can see what I'm writing and what I'm keying here. And... Uh, Let's see if we can make a little bit of noise here on the band. I'm going to try to do the ATU one more time. See if it's any more persistent trying to find a match. I don't think so. I'm going to get some kind of reply here. See if I'm being spotted at all. I'm gonna check the POTA website, POTA.app. I don't have a great connection here, but yeah, I have been spotted, it looks like. I can see here on the POTA spots, I'm in there, so hopefully somebody will hear me. What was my RBN? 4 dB on RBN, that's kind of low, but that's not too bad. I should note too that 3.30 on a Monday, not the best time to be doing POTA, but it doesn't matter. We'll get our 10, I'm sure.
I'm going to change my QSK time to about 200. I can barely see that on there, the way they've done this. Okay, there we go. Okay. I don't hear as much switching that way. Wow, come on, somebody. <laughs> Unless I'm not hearing something. Let me make sure my RF gain's not interfering with that. I don't think so, though. So both of those guys, I think, gave me a 229, which is not a very strong signal. I may end up moving down a little bit or up and see if my signal's any better. Okay, let's go ahead and move up. Okay, so we'll move up a band. That goes up. Ooh. Okay, I need to put this in CW mode. See, that's a little bit of overloading that's happening there, maybe. No.
Yeah, see how those signals are coming together there? Okay, we'll give us a go and see. But that looks like an image of that FT8 stuff going on there. Ah, this is one of my worst receivers in a radio that I own, which is probably one of the reasons I'm not just super in love with this radio, but it's good enough to get, um, you know, an activation done. I say confidently right now, not knowing. Oh boy, look at that. Mm, that is not working. See, that is... <laughs> let me try to turn down the RF gain and see if this helps. <sighs> I mean, if I deafen the receiver... Okay, so we won't be doing that. Uh, we're going to have to move to a different band. I don't like this. See, this is the thing. Like, the parks I'd used before with this radio... None of them were near a broadcast band station or anything that was causing interference, and so it wasn't a problem. This one, obviously, there's some kind of interference here that has never bothered any other radios I've owned. <laughs> so, I don't know what it is that it's picking up, but that is definitely a sign that this radio just has some issues with its receiver. This front end of this receiver is not that great. Let's try... Let's try to go down to the 30-meter band. Let's try 30 meters here and see. I see somebody there. So this is a little bit of an experiment, isn't it? Maybe I can get an activation done today. Who <laughs> We'll have to see. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and hit ATU. I don't hear anybody there. This is not giving me a great SWR. I wonder why that is. This is very strange. I would have expected this antenna to do better than this. Uh, it did better with this than my KX3. And the TX power won't go above 4 watts, and that may be because it senses that this is a little too much um, of an imp impedance mismatch. Okay, that looks like it was a 2 to 1. Oh, that's actually a pretty good one now. Okay. Looks like a pretty good match. Okay. Okay, wait. Now, how in the world did that happen? Oh, I see. I turned... The multifunction knob was on the key type, and it changed the orientation where I was hitting this and getting dits and this and getting daws, and I, I like it to be the opposite of that. Oh, goodness, okay. Let's <laughs> move it out of that. Let's try to get this going. Why can't I get more than... There we go, 5 watts. Now I'm at least getting 5 watts and getting a good match. I need to go on my app here and change it to 30 meters. I always forget to do that. And then I have a whole bunch of entries on the wrong band. So that's the real trick with keeping separate um, logs. I'm getting 10 dB on the reverse speaking network right now, so this should be do a, lot, a little bit better than 20 meters.
<laughs> this key's like a Shegu product. K1SMK. There we go. There you go. Good. New York. trying to get ants off of me. <laughs> Okay. I think it was an H. Uh, let's see here, let me double check that. No, I don't know, maybe that was an S. <laughs> I'll have to go back and listen to this again. I think that was an S. I'm gonna log as an S and keep it in here.
you hear all the, it's fading. The band's a little unstable today. Anybody else comes after him? Yeah. One more contact and I have a valid park activation. So I've now got my valid park activation, so anything else is just icing on the cake. You know what? While I'm thinking about it, I'm going to take a picture because I'm really bad to forget to take pictures. <laughs> so this way I'll... Here we go.
Okay. There we go. I just, everything blacked out his cue there. <laughs> Every time I tried to hear the cue, something came in on top of it, it seemed like. I don't know why I'm having a problem keying today. Okay, let me get it. I need to get this in my logs real quick. P R. Okay, let's try this. Okay. I don't know why it's messing up this key. Someone's calling CQ right on top of me. That's okay. You know what? Use this as an excuse to QSY down to the 40 meter band. Okay, so we're gonna move down to the 40 meter band. Let me mark that here, 40 meter CW. And let me put that in my logs here. 40 meter CW. 7 oh wait let me get to 7063 let's see if anybody's there you know what i'm gonna do actually let's see if anyone is on since i have a little internet service here i can kind of check around and see if anybody's on this frequency and also see if anybody's nearby that i can work as a park to park and I'm not seeing anybody on 40 meter CW right now, so I may just go ahead and, uh, so what I'm doing is just flipping through here. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and start calling CQ here and we'll try to work a few stations maybe. Uh, let me make a note to my buddies and tell them they're asking what frequency I'm on here on the side in text messages, so here we go. There we go. Let's give this a go again. Oh wait, I need to tune this. 
Let's see if we can do something here. Yeah. Let's try this again. Looks like I'm getting about a 1.7 to 1 and only about 3 watts out, according. my buddy Eric. I think I'm doing okay on my battery for the moment. And I'm talking about for the camera. I maybe have about 10 minutes left. <laughs> Let me check my spots and see if I'm making it here on the spotting network, since I have that luxury here. I am having to get used to the X6100 keyer though. It is a little different than the radios I've been using. Which is probably one of the reasons I'm hitting this key. There we go. K3ES. He is a part of the Poda family. <laughs> We work each other park to park, and I, I hunt him, and he hunts me. We're in our same footprint. Good to get you in the logs again, K KS4S.
Okay, I'm gonna call it quits right now. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna turn this off, but it didn't turn off. KJ4BUQ. I'll do that. I'll wait around sometimes after calling QRT. But this time I didn't do it, but... Nice. Okay, it is actually turning off. <laughs> so this was a lot of fun for me. Now we had a slow start on 20 meters and then 17 meters wasn't working because of overloading from a station or something nearby. 30 meters was super productive. Um, really nice outcome there. 40 meters, I'm pretty sure I could add another 10 on 40 meters if I really wanted to with a little bit of effort. Um, but I have to go. I'm looking at the time right now. It's almost four o'clock and I really need to be, uh, I had planned to roll out of here around four o'clock. So I, I probably need to go ahead and cut this. Um, uh, but yeah, no, it was great. Some regulars in here that I um, have been, you know, quite a bit. And uh, a lot of stations I'm not familiar with. I'm seeing a lot of call signs here that I haven't worked before as well, uh, which is really nice. There's a really strong showing in the Northeast here on the 30 meter band. And then Arkansas, that's not a state I get a lot. For some reason, it's sort of in between bands and the footprints for me. I get Alabama. I get, um, I don't get Mississippi very often either. Uh, I get Louisiana on occasion. Arkansas is not one I get very often. So that's kind of nice to get Arkansas in there and uh, I try to keep these neat so that later I can identify this but of course I've got a uh, you know electronic copy here on um, the hammers app uh, with everybody on it uh, so this makes it really easy to submit um, the activation in fact right now I'll go ahead and do that I'll show you how that works um, well I I'll just show you how um, you know, I do it here. So let's see, logbooks, is it not working? Yeah, I'm there. Oops, I was looking in the wrong place. So I can tell here, this is the one. Uh, my call sign is in, so you, there's a really particular file format you need to use for um, Parks on the Air when you submit your logs. And so I'll go in here and put uh, K4SWL at, and then the park number K2740 dash, and then you put the year, month, date. So 2022, 0509 and um, and then I just export this file as an a dot ADI and it'll ask where I want it and I can just go in here and tell it I don't want to text this to any of my friends I go in here and put it for K4 at Parks on the Air um, uh, from T Witherspoon and I'll just put in here logs for, you don't really, it doesn't really matter. They don't really care what the subject is because they know it's going to be logs, right? Um, 2740. And then I'll just put in here, um, thank you so much for, um, thank you so much for uploading the following, whoops, is that going to do it right? Nope following logs and then uh, I'll put uh, cheers Thomas and then I put my call sign in here just in case something doesn't go through but it should actually there we go and now that's attached to this and it goes to K4 at Parks on the Air that is my region so if you were in the say you're in the three region, you'd send it to K3 at Parks on the Air. And that's a team of people that handle those. They're called coordinators. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I hit send. 
and uploads it, sends it, done. And that's it. Now my logs are already submitted for this park, um, which makes it really easy. I love doing paper logging, and I do it even though I do digital on the side, even though it takes a little more time, because I kind of like going back and looking at things and, and looking at the parks. It's just, I like having a, a paper document, you know, kind of showing what I did. Also, sometimes I don't bring a digital device to log to, and so then I'll just do it on paper. The negative with that is, it's a couple different things for me, for example. I know for a fact this is KF9VV. I'm terrible with my Vs, and they look like Us. And sometimes I'll second guess myself when I go back home, and I'm like, is that a U and a V, or is that a U and a U? <laughs> so that is one negative is you can have more i find that i have more transcription errors when i do that whereas if i'm logging live i it's just fresh in my mind and i tend not to make as many errors with that um but uh so that's one of the reasons i do that it's a pain to go back later and frankly um transcribe everything into a program and use it it's much better if you can do it live but for me a guy who uh, is not good at multitasking it is a challenge when I'm doing this. I'm talking on the camera, I'm trying to key, I'm trying to watch things here, and I'm trying to log to another device. And that's a lot. And that's the reason why I get really quiet, especially when I don't have a CW message memory working that I can just press a button and have it send, you know, thank you, seven threes, all that stuff. Uh, so um, that usually gives me a little more time to think, and I couldn't do that today, so I had my hands full. Um, so 21 total contacts, I'm very pleased with that. and. Uh, Again, thank you so much for joining me today. And <laughs> one of the negatives about looking at the uh, radio so long is you don't get to see this beautiful weather we're having. This is absolutely gorgeous today. I uh, really couldn't um, be more pleased. Um, it won't take me long to pack this up, uh, probably a total of five minutes. Uh, that is one of the great things about these speaker wire antennas is they're so simple, there's just nothing to them. I just wrap them up and uh, get it done. You can see here at the park today at Lake Norman. This is a parking area for one of their trails. I'm, I, I wish I had time to take the trail today because they've got a really wonderful trail called the Lakeshore Trail that goes around. I think you can turn that into a six-mile trail. Uh, when you look at it on a map, you don't understand how in the world they could make six miles out of it, but it follows this really jagged coastline uh, along the lake, and it works. But as you can see here, there are loads of trees that you could put antennas in. I mean, this is the great thing about living in the southeast U.S. as well. We don't have to worry about bringing supports with us, and that's one of the reasons you don't see me bring fiberglass supports out with me. Um, I know a lot of my friends that live out west and live in desert areas and that go to really rocky mountains to do summit activations. They usually take a nice fiberglass mast or something with them. I just don't need to do that. Almost every park, even every, most of the mountains I go to, even our tallest mountain here, which is Mount Mitchell, um, you know, I'm able to uh, use um, wire antennas even on Mount Mitchell. Now the trees, albeit on top of Mount Mitchell, are not very tall, but it doesn't matter if I'm operating 20 meters or something. I don't need a very long antenna for an NPAD half wave, uh, for example. But here I could stretch out at this particular park. In fact, at this particular site, I've done 80 meters and 160 meters one time that I ran all through these trees. And I made a really long line out, uh, like this massive inverted V off of a random, really long random wire antenna I did once. I need to build another one of those, actually. Um, so, um, yeah, that's the great thing about living here where we do. I'm sure some of you who live in areas like this can do the same thing. And uh, also, you know, this is a general coverage uh, transceiver. Um, not the best for doing shortwave radio listening, mainly because of the um, the receiver's not very good in this, I don't think. I mean, it, it overloads easily. It's sensitive, but it overloads, and especially around broadcast signals, i found. So I don't really use it for shortwave radio listening. But if I have something like the IC705 or my KX2 or my KX3, um, being a shortwave radio listener, a lot of times when I finish up an activation, if I have time and I'm not in a rush like I am today, I'll actually do a little bit of shortwave radio listening for a little while because you can put up some really cool antennas. Even this one will perform really, really well uh, for shortwave radio. Uh, so, yeah. And you'll notice um, <laughs> I could actually pull on this line and bring up the radiator a little bit higher. It did slide down a little bit. I could tie this off, but it doesn't really need it because that wire is so lightweight uh, that it doesn't it doesn't really tug down uh, just the weight of the line itself. This super lightweight line holds it up and in, 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 you know, fine enough you know, to do this activation. But if this were heavy, then I would tie this off at the tree or something temporarily just to hold the line up. But yeah, anyway, I better stop talking, get this thing capped off and uh, uh, head out the door. 
um, as I always say, let's treat each other with kindness while we're out there. And if you get a chance, I hope you get to play radio outdoors, uh, no matter how you do. <laughs> maybe, maybe just maybe you can take somebody out in the field and show them how uh, field radio works or um, help someone along, a new radio enthusiast, a new ham radio operator, and uh, kind of show them what you're passionate about here with uh, radio in the field um, or um, ham radio in general. So uh, thank you so much again. Thank you for all the positive content. Um, I mean, comments and as always, um, you know, there are no ads in my videos or anything, but I really, really appreciate all the people who send me funds through the coffee fund and, uh, um, Patreon. Uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, you guys are what make all of this possible for me to take time away from work, uh, that I do and come out and play radio so often and then spend, you know, what amounts to usually about six hours putting together the field report crunching the video and then later uploading it which even takes longer <laughs> usually so uh, it makes it a great excuse for me to come out and do this and uh, thank you so much for everything um, and don't feel that you ever have to contribute to my coffee fund or patreon account or anything I'll always do this stuff for free uh, this is all about just going out and sharing uh, my passion for field radio so uh, that's the goal here uh, this is a labor of love anyway again Thank you so much, and until next time, 7-3s.